Alléluia, Alléluia, Alléluia. Uh, brethren in Christ, we give thanks to God for giving us another opportunity in the land of the living. And uh, here we are, as uh, Joshua was saying, uh, may this word never depart from us. And uh, that is so real. And that's why every time we need to find a way to get connected to God one way or the other. So we thank him for this uh, grace whereby he gives us the ability to give uh, this uh, little uh, presentation. We pray that whatever we'll be saying will be directly from his dictation to us. And that this will bring uh, a, a great uh, ingredients that will fortify our soul in the name of Jesus. Um, at this time, we want to discuss a topic uh, uh, tagged uh, the benediction. The benediction, uh, this is uh, stuff we always uh, see. Uh, most of the people who are not uh, truly connected to the Bible would know, but uh, in churches, uh, we do hear this uh, a lot. Benediction, benediction, we hear the word a lot. So it is uh, actually found in the Bible. And uh, uh, every time you see this uh, statement, benediction, uh, it always comes at the end of uh, the book or at the end of any program. That's the way the, the benediction comes in. So you can also see in other books, uh, salutation. So salut benediction. And... Uh, a, a, a benediction is not a prayer. So it's a kind of, uh, it's a moment where uh, the word of God is just to serve briefly to close uh, an event or a statement or, or a program. That's the way uh, uh, this uh, benediction is set and that's the way it, is, it has been given uh, to us. Now, what a benediction is in reality? Uh, the benediction, as I was saying to you earlier, when uh, those uh, people who work for God uh, in the old days, they want to address uh, the salute. They say, we salute you, greeting. That's what they say. So now, the end of the whole thing now is closed with benediction. And once benediction is given, it's just uh, a way of closing. It's just a way of closing the whole thing. So we thank God for the uh, administration. So now let's quickly tackle what is in that benediction. We would like uh, to read the, from uh, uh, the letter, one of the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Actually, is going to be his uh, second letter to the Corinthians. So, check in uh, the chapter 13, uh, for example, uh, and then going down to the last verse. Again, as I was saying earlier, Benediction will always come to close a chapter. So, um, it states, again, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So that's the way benediction comes, and that's just the way it has been given. But in the culture, for what we've seen lately, 
we see that uh, every at every time we close a program or we close any aspect of our services, a benediction is needed. And once they assign someone to give the benediction, they turn the benediction into a prayer, which is actually what we're trying to highlight here to correct something. Is not me, actually, it's the Bible. So since this has entered the church of God, and uh, this is actually one of the reasons why a time management is not, uh, is not uh, efficiency. So we want to try by the help of the Holy Spirit, beginning to fix some little, little thing, which will bring our church back to the way it was given. And then also matching it with what the Bible ask us to do so uh you can see right there that it's just a benediction is not a long prayer so again as i was saying earlier when they assign someone to say the benediction they'll start uh, praying for forgiveness they'll start uh, praying for a safe uh, journey They'll start uh, praying for the barren. They start praying for victory. They start praying for protection. They pray for a lot of things. And some older, they go into stories, actually. So those are things we feel like is better for us to fix. Because benediction is benediction. Benediction is not to enter into a full a, 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 a page of a prayer again. So that's uh, what uh, we can see about that. Now, trying to see what uh, that benediction contains, we can see the very first uh, statement in it, which is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think that is by accident that the Spirit uh, gave uh, Paul this, uh, this uh, statement? No, it's not by accident. Because when you check very well, grace came through Jesus Christ. And I would like us to understand that uh, mercy, every time we say mercy, mercy is from God. Mercy came from God. Why? Because it's from the mercy of God that God sent his son. And the son came with the grace. So when we now want to ask for mercy, we should not thank Jesus Christ, we thank God. But now when we want to ask for grace, we should not thank God, we need to thank Jesus Christ. Because that's what they all come with. So, Jesus comes with grace. And grace is actually what? Grace is just what qualifies you instantly. Like things you don't deserve, God qualifies, Jesus Christ qualifies you because of that work he performed on the cross. So that's the grace. And uh, we are so blessed that that's what comes actually with our church. We are fortunate and we do not take it for, gr for granted. So that's grace. Again, remember, the mercy of God is what sent Jesus Christ because we all sinned and we became uh, a, a, a bad product before God. We were short of his glory. And since uh, he loves us, he had mercy. He had mercy upon his people. And that one is what causes him to now dispatch his son to come. And the son came with a grace. So now the son is the one who introduced the, the, the a, a communion of the Holy Spirit. In uh, the book of uh, John, chapter um, 16, I believe from the verse 7, it says something very important there, and that's uh, where the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit uh, a, a is, uh, is uh, uh, states. So John uh, chapter 16, um, we are taking uh, the verse 7. And let's see what it says here. It says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. 
it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So now, who dispatch and introduce the communion of the Holy Spirit to us is the Jesus Christ. So the Father accomplished his mission by sending the Son. The Son finished his uh, mission and uh, introduced the Holy Spirit, who actually is the third person in the Holy Trinity. Not because he's the least, but he's just the third in the order. So now uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the Holy Spirit. They say the, the, the Bible declared that uh, the sweet uh, fellowship of the communion. Another version said the communion. Other states uh, the, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, why do they put sweet? Everything we hear sweet actually is like uh, something desirable, something we like to enjoy, something smooth and easy and uh, gentle. That's the, 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 the characteristic of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes so that, remember when Jesus Christ was still on earth, we can hear all the places he uh, uh, went through. So now that he sent the Holy Spirit, remember the statement in that John 16, 7. He said, it's uh, very important for you if uh, I go. I have to go. When I do go, now the comforter will come. And who is the comforter? Is the Holy Spirit. So when he does come, what will happen, do you think? Is that everywhere, at any time, there will be operation. God's presence will be filled there. John 17, he said, Father, I talked to them about you. And not all of, them, all of them accepted the word you ask me to minister unto them. But those who do accept, there's a prayer I pray. I pray that you watch over them. Don't take them away from the world, but watch over them. Preserve their lives. So that's what God is doing and that one is a prayer from Jesus Christ to the Father. But now, Jesus is saying in that book that it's very important for me, for you guys. Me, I need to go. Once I do go, you will profit a lot. What's the profit? Why is that the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, so that he can continue to lead us on this same path which Christ came and showed us. So in Asia, people can be directed by that power of the Holy Spirit. You go to Europe, the same thing will be happening. You go to Australia, it's going to be happening. You go to U.S. or Africa, anywhere at any moment, that spirit will be operating. Now, I'm not sure if you have ever been curious to know why there's something they use to describe the Holy Spirit. They use a dove. They use a bird. Let me just say bird. If a dove might not be the right to, a, a name of that bird, just let me just put it bird. There's a bird. Every time you see the bird, it's like the Holy Spirit. That's uh, the way we get to know through the Bible. So, why do you think they, they symbolize the Holy Spirit by the bird? It means simply that the bird, what do you think the bird does? Bird can fly and go anywhere at any time. God, the bird can go even like it's illimited. It can go and stop and continue. So that's how the Holy Spirit also is. The Holy Spirit moves freely and then cover many spaces at any time and any day. 
So that's why they just use the belt, which symbolized actually the Holy Spirit. So saying this, we are now wrapping it up. The benediction is not a prayer. The benediction is just a word to seal an event, a chapter of the service or anything. It's just to seal. And then that's it. You can say a blessing and it's in that benediction. And we commit the whole thing. The grace, let me repeat again what the benediction carries. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So that's what we see in benediction. We pray that uh, whoever, those who will be able to get in touch with this uh, 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 Lido uh, dictations uh, from God to the Holy Spirit will uh, start uh, uh, amending their ways when they have chance to say the blessing uh, upon the body of uh, Jesus Christ. That happened also to finalize now because they did not, maybe they did not have chance to pray. And once they give them the benediction, they just come to say everything they have in their heart, which is actually is a mistake and it's not a biblical. Benediction is benediction. May the peace of God be with us.